I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And yes, I do not have a face cam today. Today is just desktop. I got a topic that's so hot that I got to get it out, and I don't have time to set up all my lighting rig and everything here in this hotel room. So I'm just making a quick video for you, but it's got a really good tip in it for helping you figure out why your quadcopter isn't arming. Now, I've already got a video talking about many of the reasons why the quadcopter might not arm, but the problem with that video is that at the end of the day it just comes down to trial and error you just got to guess you got to check all the things and hope that you find one of them that's wrong and ultimately wouldn't it be nice if betaflake could just freaking tell you why it's refusing to arm well now it can as of betaflake 3.2 there's a way you can find it and the way this is going to work is you're going to connect your computer and you're going to go into the command line and you're going to type status and in the status it will be an arming disable flags. And that is gonna tell you the most severe reason why your quadcopter is refusing to arm at this moment in time. So you can see right now mine is RX loss C and CLI, okay? Uh, actually, it, oh, it's not the most severe. It's the, uh, it looks like it's telling all of them. That's, that's even better than I thought. So the reasons are RX loss and CLI. Now you may go, okay, well, what are these arming disable flags? What do they freaking mean? Here's the answer to that. Here on GitHub is a page about arming sequence and safety. And here are the arming prevention flags. So if we look through here, we can see that RX loss means that no valid receiver signal is detected. And the reason for that in this case is that I've got my quadcopter plugged into USB, but I don't have a battery plugged in. I don't have a transmitter turned on. So of course the receiver is neither powered up nor bound nor getting signal anyway. So of course the receiver is not, so the quadcopter won't arm, obviously, if the receiver is not plugged in. The other thing that is CLI, and if we look through here, we can see the reason CLI is that the CLI is active. Well, of course, you're gonna see that reason anytime you're trying to arm the quadcopter with the, you know, anytime you're doing this thing, you're gonna have the CLI active because you're in the CLI. For safety reasons, the quadcopter will not arm when you're in the CLI because you could be doing things in the command line that could create a safety issue. They don't want you to accidentally arm the quad because of some command you typed in in the CLI. So if you've got a quadcopter that will not arm, what you can do is you can plug it into USB. You can plug in a battery. Best to do this with the props off. You can try to arm the quad and then you can type status in the command line and see why the heck it's not arming. Now I got one more tip for you. If you're using an F3 or an F1 board, then you're not gonna see RX loss and CLI. You're gonna see an, a hexadecimal number. And the reason for that is that those boards have so little memory that they have to save space and putting str strings take up a lot of space. Text strings take up a lot of memory space. So they have not put these strings in. Instead, they just give you these encoded values. And that can be a little bit confusing because as you can see, these are flags. And what that means is that each of these can be either true or false, but multiple ones of them could be preventing you from arming at the same time. So what you need to do if you have an F3 or an F1 board is and it's linked right here, you need to go to runtimeconfig.h and you can look right here where the flags are defined. And what you can see, and if you're a computer scientist, then this is all gonna make sense to you. If you're not a computer scientist, just hold on, I'll get, I'll get to the end and then it'll be like, okay, for, yeah, forget all that stuff. But it basically, each of these is a single binary one that has been shifted left into a certain position. So for example, if we had Let's say we have the arming flag 1900. So on an F1 board, instead of seeing RX loss and CLI, we would see something like 0x1900. What I can do is I can go to Google and I can type 0x, that's hexadecimal, 1900 to binary. And it'll convert that hexadecimal number to binary. And what you'll see is that the, some of these flags are enabled. Those are the ones that are uh, set to one and some of them are disabled. Those are the ones that are set to zero. So then what you can do is you can count from right to left. So this is the zeroth position, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth position is a one. And then I'm gonna go to runtimeconfig.h and I'm gonna look for flag number eight. Here it is. And that flag is arming disabled, no prearm. And then I can go back here and I can look for prearm 
the prearm switch is not activated or prearm has not been toggled after disarm. Toggle the prearm switch. So in this case, it would indicate that the reason the quad wasn't arming is because you have the prearm mode activated, but you haven't actually enabled the prearm switch. So there you go. And if we continue to count, this was number 8, number 9, 10, 11, and 12 are also set to 1. These reasons are also preventing it from arming. We can look here and we can see that number 12 is the CLI. Okay, and number 11 is calibrating. Now this is actually a problem that somebody had uh, on Facebook or YouTube they were asking about. Um, and if we look, we can see that calibrating, yeah, that's this one. Cal sensor calibration is still ongoing. Now this is an interesting one because uh, gyro calibration should occur as soon as you power the quad up as soon as you set it down and hold it steady, calibration should occur and then that should end. Some things that might cause calibration to prevent you from arming would be if you have, there's an option that'll cause gyro calibration to occur just before you first arm the quad rather than right after you power it up. And if you have done that and you haven't armed the quad, then this will be true until the first time you arm. The other thing might be if you've been holding the quad and you've been wiggling it around, you haven't set it still to give the gyro a chance to calibrate, then it'll be waiting for you to set the quad down and hold it still. If you've set the quad down and held it still and you still are getting this value, it may be that your gyro is messed up and the gyro is perceiving that the quad isn't still even though it's actually just sitting there. Anyway, so this is how you can figure out definitively why your quadcopter won't arm. Go to the CLI, type status. If you have an F F4 or an F7 or any board into the future, you'll get a text string that you can then go look up here. I'll put this page in the video description. You can have a link to it. You can look up why it's not, ca why it's not arming. If you have an F1 or, or an F3 board, you're gonna need to convert it to binary. You're gonna need to count, starting from zero, by the way, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way till you find the ones that are turned on. And then you're gonna to need to go to runtimeconfig.h to find out which flag that is. And then you can go look it up over here, same process. There you go, the definitive way of finding out why your quadcopter won't arm. I'll also add, by the way, that this is shown in the OSD, or, or sorry, this is shown in the CLI by typing status, but it's also shown on the Betaflight OSD. So if you've got an OSD in the field, it'll show you why it's not arming. Now I actually am a little bit confused about this because I've looked on the OSD and I've tried to figure out which of these elements is the one that tells you why it won't arm. Is it debug? I don't think so. Um, I'm not sure which one it is to tell you the truth. Maybe it's the arming status one that says disarmed, I'm not 100% sure, man. Well, that would make a lot of sense, but I, I don't know what it is, but there is, maybe it's warnings, huh? No, that's low voltage. Well, I sure don't know, And uh, but there is an OSD element that'll also tell you what the reason is why it won't arm, and it also gives you beep patterns, so there's a specific beep pattern that'll beep the number of the warning, but gosh, <laughs> that's, that's you sitting there counting, that's kind of annoying. So there you go. Now you can figure out why your quadcopter won't arm. Leave any questions you've got down in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.